And welcome back once again to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a uh, homebrew D&D 5th Ed camp competition, competition campaign. <laughs> competition. Going. Competitive <laughs> D&D. That's right. That's right. Uh, no, it is not competitive. It is collaborative. Uh, this is Legends of the Drowned Isles, the alt campaign, otherwise known as The Great Confusion, which was chosen thematically and turned out to be more real world than I actually meant, but it worked out pretty well. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated it One. It, 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 it works okay. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm the uh, host and GM and largely responsible for the mistakes. Fortunately, I have players here who are going to make all the right moves and make everything look great. Players, please introduce <laughs> yourself starting no off pressure. the right. <laughs> My name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh. Um, who turns out to actually be a warlock and not a wizard. Still an illusionist, though. My name is Marie, and who knows who I'm playing? And We're about course. to find out. And I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrag, half-orc cleric. All right. And let's uh, see if I can set the, the scene a little bit in this recap. After resting at the Cold Pack Lighthouse... After rescuing people from the Sea Devils, the group sets out for Elthwater again, the threat of the imminent attack on the town weighing on their minds. Also weighing on the minds of Annie and Medrick was what exactly happened in the other room, where Silas met with the Sea Devils. Silas explains what happened, which required him to tell his friends a bit more about his family and his own unusual role within it. The group then made their way into town, discussing the upcoming attack and what the town might do. An encounter with the head of the local guard, Captain Verendel, did not go well. The captain was annoyed, considering their statements yet another of the numerous rumors he and his guards had been chasing, from a house that was haunted and increased banded activity. When they initially failed to convince him that the city might be under attack, Annie told him that Gaetano's real identity was none other than Sir Oswin Mundo, one of the famous Seven Knights of Alaria. It appeared that Captain Verendel was impressed and immediately rode off to speak to his guards. As we return, we are at a quiet table in the corner of the Three Bells, with Gaetano leading into a discussion about identity. So I probably abbreviated that a bit much, but that generally gets the spirit of it. And indeed, you've gathered and Gaetano um was was uh, well actually Annie might remember the question best because I think she took the best notes from the previous session but what was Gaetano's last question or statement something along the lines of and what should we call you right so Annie clearly asserted that Gaetano is in fact Sir Oswin Mundo and in turning to the captain he had said the same thing. But now he looks around the table with some concern. Ale having been delivered by Sandy, one of the three bells herself. Uh, but now with the room more or less to yourselves, uh, I think Joan and Stela were sitting over by the fireplace, as I recall, chatting amongst themselves. Gitano looks to all three of you. Now... Uh, I thought Silas was bringing back the cart. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I think I'm just going to change that. He'll take it back after this. Yeah, there's no particular rush on returning the cart. Um, we have it until 6 p.m. tonight, right? <laughs> I mean, there's a rewind fee if you don't uh, set it up properly. <laughs> there's one for the uh, the elder among the community. Uh, but as Gaetano looks uh, through to the three of you, uh, and takes a, a sip of his of his ale, which he, he looks rather surprised at the quality of the ale. A small seaside town like this shouldn't have much for for proper feeding, but you all know that one of the three bells actually brews in the back of the inn. But he takes a deep breath and he says, "We're going to have a serious problem if Captain Verendel actually believe." believe that I am Sir Mundo, which or Oswin as you please call me, but 
actually keep it Gaetano for now. If he actually believed that, I suspect he'll be in trouble in about an hour. Mostly because he won't be believed himself. And frankly, he shouldn't be. Rumors like that happen from time to time, and... Well, there's a reason I don't usually announce myself. Because I'm usually working if I'm not under my own name. I do have some... Well, proof of my identity, I suppose you might say. It was on board the Errant Widow. I'll have to see if that ship still has my cargo on board. But I suspect he'll go and try to reorganize his guards. But as soon as he has to report back to the Baron one way or the other, I think his sanity will be called into question, and he'll look like a fool. So it's not a permanent could solution. You, could you possibly go with him? Maybe. I'm not so sure that I want to, but it might be necessary. He also may just send a few people here to arrest me for posing as an official. But I can take that heat. That's not a problem. And if necessary, I don't mind going to jail, preferably after the attack. But they'll see some proof of it afterwards, I suppose. <clears throat> now... I'm not here as Aswin. I would have introduced myself as that if I felt it was necessary. But I'm here as Gaetano. It's easier for me to slip in and out of places, for people not to question my motives and to speak to me plainly if they think that I'm just another traitor. People tend to be a little bit more standoffish if they know that I'm an official of the kingdom. And there have been rumors that I've been trying to track down. Sightings of sea creatures and some other trade. There's a suspicion that pirates are at, at work, or have been at work for a while. It's, it's hard to track back. The confusion seems to have messed everything up. Pirates and shadowy beings. I've heard stories, but I haven't seen anything yet myself. I thought I was onto something when the storm rose and the ship nearly capsized. While the sea devils are undoubtedly wrapped up in it somehow, I, I still don't know the connection. Have you heard of the diamond? No. What can you tell me about him? Or it? Not much, just that some of the local bandits ambushing caravans and travelers are working for him, for them. Hmm. You don't know anything else? No. And I'll recount to him, like, our adventure uh, when we helped, uh, wow, I keep forgetting the farmer's name. The Winters? Uh, yeah, when we helped the Winters. Winter. Winter. Also, yeah. we, we did help uh, the inn here Yeah. deal with the situation with him. So, in the discussion about the wind trips. Do you talk about the temple, Cathron, and Sedona? No. I'll leave that out for now. Okay. Um, make a uh, deception roll, as you are obviously leaving parts of this out. I will mention that there's people I used to fight with that were there trying to ambush us. Deception? Oh, shit. Just a sec. Character sheet, where are you? Forgot to open my character sheet. Um, my entire thing just froze uh, when I went to roll stuff. And I'm on the good computer, so I'm not risking it. <laughs> Out come the dice. Out come the dice. I knew something was going to happen. Okay. As um... Medrick is explaining and describing <laughs> what happened at the table, he starts to talk about following the shadow, which was the other thing you, you, you encountered. If you're leaving Sedona out as well, uh, it's yeah. going to make that encounter in the barn a lot more vague. Um, but as, a, as Medrick explains that you encountered these bandits along the way, and then you were going and tracing back the lost cows in the forest to a hideout, Medrick kind of stops mid-sentence 
contemplates what he's talking about, realizes he's trying really to get just back to you, right? <laughs> describing the hideout isn't going to work, and then kind of ends with, and then we fought them and they left. Rather yeah, there was a bunch of statues and stuff, but it looked like religion, like religious statues, but it's not my religion, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and if you ask me, there's only one religion, but we'll leave that for after a few drinks. Um, and Gitano kind of froze his brow at your rather abrupt description. Ah, well, it might be worth taking a look at then. Especially if it has signs of the bandits or if they're going to keep using the place. Thanks, kid. I appreciate the fill-in. No problem. I mean, we flushed the, band we, we flushed the bandits out, but they could always return. Well, there have been reports that more and more bandits have been in the area. And I, from what the captain was saying, that's one of his concerns. It seems that some of my former colleagues from the war, the war of who knows what, might have joined the bandits. Unfortunately, that's not an, un not a, an uncommon story. A lot of soldiers left with the will to fight, but no one left to fight. Turned towards mercenary actions, and where I've been able to, I've put a lot of them on boats. But soldiers don't always take to boats as well as they could. It's a shame, really. Well, I can't say I blame them. I'm, I hate the ocean between you and me, but I do realize that sea travel is necessary to get from place to place. He winces a little bit when you say, I hate the ocean. Um, <laughs> Was he not in the ocean with us? <laughs> <laughs> um, the soul just died a little. <laughs> um, but he, he kind of nods and uh, takes a sip of his, of his drink. Now, as for this attack, it'll be necessary to try to get the guards involved, but I'm not sure what they're going to be able to do. I don't know enough about this town to really know where they might attack. I know it's an important port, and I know that there are still there are ships that are docked. And I'll be heading down to the dock, if I'm not thrown in jail, to speak with the captain of the errant widow. I'll see if I can convince Stoutheart to put out to sea. I don't think that would be in their best interest to be in dock when... Uh, well, when everything happens, whatever it is. She won't like it. She probably hasn't got a full load yet. Hmm. She can come back after. Yeah, provided she isn't caught up in it. If she has to sail far enough away, then she's not going to be caught in the whatever. Uh, it could be dangerous. Still... What else can you tell me about the defenses of this town? What you see is what we've got. There's the Baron's soldiers, and that's it. I was afraid of that. He's hired more recently out of the soldiers that came back from the war with nothing to do. But uh... There was a job posting. Uh I, I, the player, don't remember because it was like months ago. Um, but I, I'll say something about the job posting that was like a 10 year service. Like it was like a really long service period. Yeah. I'll keep an eye out for that. It's not uncommon to want to make sure your soldiers are locked in for a while. Um, that's a little bit extreme, though. Yeah, like had it been a year or two, I might have considered it, but ten? Hell no. It can be a weird thing. It might be trying to offer them actually some solace, some, some solidity after everything that's happened. I've seen that sort of thing happening over the last few weeks. Um, people tying themselves in knots to try to tie themselves in, in time. It's affected a lot of people in weird ways. Are you close with the Baron? And he looks pointedly at Annie. Um, I've 
never met the Baron, I don't think. If I have in my past, I, the player, don't know. Uh, no. No, you came off a boat to this place only a few weeks ago yourself. Yeah. Uh, unless he's been to me, I, I've not met him. Hmm. Well, that's a shame. It would be nice to bend the Baron's ear. Have you ever met him? No. No. I've, I've traveled a lot of places, but this is one of the few ports I haven't visited. And I don't think he's ever been to Paraval, unless he, he would be have been there. I have not met him. I've not had a reason to. Nobody's supposed to know I'm here. Is that so? So why is nobody supposed to know you're here? Yeah, who do you work for, really? <laughs> who do you both work for, really? <laughs> My real name. Uh, I would like to make a perception check actually first. Sure. To make sure nobody's listening. Okay. You look around the room. Uh, that's an 18. Okay. You see Sandy at the bar, uh, kind of cleaning, uh, keeping everything straight. She's looking around, but not paying attention to too much. Uh, you kind of get that sense that she's, she's, her eyes are scanning the room, but her mind is probably on. Uh, you know, provisioning of supplies or something else like that. You've seen her kind of have that that appearance of watchfulness, but you've you've spoken to her while she's in that mode and realized she wasn't really paying attention. Um, over by the uh, fireplace, uh, Stela seems to be whispering closely with Joan, uh, who seems to be throwing her strange looks from time to time and then laughing a little bit, but uh, otherwise they're involved in their own conversation. Um, I think that there was one other person essentially in the room uh, who's kind of sleeping off the night before, perhaps, uh, kind of sprawled across the table and seems to show no sign of, of, uh, of awareness at all. Seems to be just you guys. Gatano um, raises an eyebrow when you say, my name is, and seeing what happens next. I sigh again. Uh, I'm like, Okay, so obviously I still want you to call me Annie, because it's not a complete lie. It's what my little sister calls me. But my full name is, and my voice goes down in volume, uh, Lady Annalise Giselle Louisa Philippa Grace Montrose, Princess of Alaria. Can you repeat that, player? Like, player <laughs> question? Maybe something, 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 Princess. Lady Annalise. <laughs> Annalise Giselle Louisa Philippa Grace Montrose. I kind of Louisa think Princess of Valeria. I kind of think that it's appropriate that it was a person with that many names as you're hearing it, you're already forgetting it. Because uh it's a rather long name. Any it is. But perhaps yep. three of the most important uh or four of the most important words that you do pick out first of all is she begins her name with Lady and ends it with Princess of Alaria. Valaria being the kingdom which rules this entire area. And about, I think, eight islands at this point. And I put my signet ring on the table. Describe your signet ring. So your parents run the... Uh, so, so your parents own all this? <laughs> yes. Okay. Basically. So it was Lady Annalise Giselle Louisa Philippa? Grace. And Montrose is the family name. Philippa Grace Montrose. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, like, Medrick is just going to be like, as you're going on and on and on with names, it's like glass eyed look, and it's like, all right, um, any, any it is. <laughs> any it is. Um, I will uh, at some point get a. Uh, I do have a picture drawn, um, but it's just in pencil, so I can't even show it. Um, but it's basically a, oh, I can't even remember it. Uh, it's like a rose with a butterfly on it, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, just give me two seconds here. 
Uh, that took like four three one right on my sheet, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, it, 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 I had to write it down to make sure I said all of them right. Um, but yes, uh, it is a rose with a butterfly on it for sure, and I think there's some ivy around it as well. Mm. I keep opening the wrong document. Yeah, I'm looking anyway. at her picture, but I can't get the picture to open up big enough to look much at the rain. So yeah, actually, I have. The uh, I don't in front think of me in. I don't think in that one he actually put the one but in the other one that i got made uh you can see it uh you can see the butterfly on it um so yes and to answer your question medrick the seven nights of valaria are basically uh advisors and representatives to the king the queen and king okay i figured that it would be easier for the for them to believe that one of the seven was here than me because i'm not supposed to be here aha yes that is that is my sketch Cool. Nice. That so, is probably one of the best drawings I've ever drawn. <laughs> <laughs> I do not draw. It is so, very nice. Um, so yes, that that is what's on my ring. And the ring is also made by the same person who made the ring we found, which I return to Gitano. Gitano. <laughs> um, and he takes it back and he, he nods. You've given the um, royal court rather a, well, I, I think a heart attack is an appropriate term. It's good to see that you're well. Surprised to see you, but not exactly sure. I was surprised to see you. Not exactly sure what you're doing here. Why are you here? As Gaetano has said, I just wanted people to talk to me plainly. I wanted to know what the people need out of a ruler. My parents disagreed. Um, but also waiting for it to be my turn to rule, uh, to do this, would have been too late. Hmm. If they had agreed, they could have sent guards with me, and I could have like sent them reports. But no, here we are. And Gitano's face kind of breaks into a large smile, and he slaps the table heartily and laughs. By the seas, your father is upset. You know why? I think he did the same thing himself when he was about your age. Granted, he wasn't necessarily royal at that point, but. I can respect your decision. Yeah, same here. I will. If... I wish they would, have, they would have agreed. I I honestly don't know how I got out. There there were some points where I was like, how did that person not see me? <laughs> and once I got out of Paravel, I was just like, well, mm -hmm. it it actually worked this time. How many attempts did you make? You mentioned this time. A lot. A lot. Usually I got caught either at the at the gates of the castle or a few feet away. I have been back to Paravel for a while. I've only been corresponding with letters or magic. So I don't know exactly how they, they figured out how you got away this time. Still, I hope that you're taking care of yourself. Present danger... I'm trying to stay Present danger excluded, of course. It's not like your family is immune to danger anyway. Still, keep yourself safe here. And if I'm called to, 
I will have to report where you're at. More or less. Let's just hope they don't That's ask fair. me. Well, she's taking care of herself just fine. She's a great fighter. Slain many sea devils. I'm glad to hear that, I suppose. <laughs> uh, what's her name? What, what is my teacher's name again? Uh, I forget. Uh, oh, your, your governess? Okay, Penrov no, no, not not Elena. The the seven, the member of the seven who trained me. Oh yeah, Conrova. Uh, I yes. think. I believe it was Conrova. Yeah. Conrova taught me well. She'd be pleased to hear that. <clears throat> she taught me a few tricks myself. I don't look forward to her reaction when I get back, though. Um. I think I'll quote her on that. Be prepared to defend yourself. Still. Probably a good idea. At some point, you're going to you're going to want to know the Baron if you're going to be in this area for a while, not necessarily as Annalise, but even as Annie. If you want to see how someone thought... rules, you're probably going to need to talk to him. I've thought about it. Uh, I also have a secret identity. It's a Midrick, M-I-D-R-I-K. <laughs> for that purposes. Is that going to be an issue? Midrick is literally feeling left out in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> He's changed his ease from eyes for tax reasons. Um, Gitano would have to laugh at that again. Well, I don't think that uh, I have anything to do with the official tax keeper, so your sacred safe with me. It's a little hard to be that secretive, though, when you light up on fire occasionally. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, I'm going to have to speak with the flame keeper about our recent adventures. Yeah. Also, I've posted in our chat the other art that I got done for her. And I should let him know that he can post it now because he, uh, the artist George, has been not specifically not posting this commission yeah. until the reveal, nice. which is great. <laughs> nice. Because he's known all along. <laughs> yeah. Didn't mean to cut her head off there. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. That's what she looks like with yeah. the, you know, shower and some fresh clothes. <laughs> Basically. Um, well, Gaetano will ask you more of the details about the diamond. Do you mention the shadow? Uh, I think we did because we mentioned the fight at the barn. Yeah. yeah, we didn't mention Sedona herself, but like we did mention a shadow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I will mention at this point um, that he knew who I was. Do you know who he was or it was? I have no clue, but he definitely knew who I was. Hmm. Dangerous. He said something along the lines of, you, you, you better hope your parents are here soon. Hmm. Wait, what? And yeah, that's the first time that Medrick and Silas have actually heard mm -hmm. that exchange as well. I mean, I couldn't just tell them. <laughs> it's like Silas is Silas just admitted to worshiping like some otherworldly entity, and that his family might might murder people. So, I mean, more uh, importantly, Medrick just admitted tax evasion. <laughs> In front of you know royalty yeah. who get the taxes. <laughs> he seems pretty cool though. I'll just say it was an honest typo. <laughs> my 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 quill verbally. Sorry. <laughs> it's the orcish to a common translation. The eyes and the e's keep getting mixed up with one another. <laughs> yeah. After he uh, drains his mug, uh, Gaetano sighs. 
I should probably get to the Art Widow before the guards catch up to me or something happens. I'll be checking in with them to try to, try to figure out what's what they can do. They're not really armed for this sort of thing. They may be willing to fight, but it, they're more vulnerable and the tide comes in tomorrow. Still, we'll see if I have any recruits there. It's probably best for the ship to not be docked when it happens. At the very least. It's my thinking too. Get as far away. Get get as far away from here as they can. All right. My ideally I would like to try to evacuate those who live nearby the the docks. Or have them stay in their houses. I don't know how easily it's going to be to convince them. We don't have any proof, and while I can wave my symbol around if I need to, it's not going to carry a lot of weight with the common person. You'll find that. That is fair. That it's not all about the name. I'll pull out the Warhammer that I took from the Sea Devil. Do we have anybody who could study this? Figure out I don't know anything about it. It works underwater, but not really well in the air. I mean, Gatano doesn't I... know anybody here. Okay. <laughs> Silas. <laughs> uh, I don't know of anyone that really... I mean, the people here didn't even really believe well I mean the captain didn't believe that the sea devils were even real I don't know if we have anyone in town who really knows much about their weapons maybe we can keep the hammer as proof then yeah I could use it yourself you're yeah if we're we hitting pretty well with it underwater only yeah. um Well, if you think of anything, I'll try to slip back in later. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if the guards will have um, a listing for me pretty soon. Yes. So Sorry about that. Should we say that we don't know you, or...? We just found you on the bottom of the sea. Hmm? It's not a lie. There have been people who've masqueraded as the Seven before. But wait, you didn't say you were a part of the Seven. And he did. No, I said it as well. I think it was better to attract attention to myself at that moment rather than her. Wait, you knew who she was already? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, the family resemblance is strong. Plus, it's also... Partially my job to know who the royals are. Again. Didn't do it to run away from you guys. I just wanted to do my thing. Well, it's good to see that you're at least safe for the moment. Even if I did run into you in the middle of a sea devil den. Fair enough. Still, I'm going to check in with the ship. I hadn't been here. <laughs> well, I had a plan. Just was going to take a little longer. Fair enough. I'll be back. Uh, will you be here? You're Probably. around here. Uh, is there a back way out of this it's place? Right. Is there a back way? Of There's the windows. Probably. Um, Annie would have scoped it out a bit when she came in, and there is indeed a, a rear entrance as well as an entrance towards the kitchen. The one in the, through the kitchen, while it can be convenient, isn't when the kitchen is full of uh, cooking stuff, which it is right now. Uh, but the back door is easily accessible. You pointed out to him. Yeah. 
I would have wanted a place that I could get out of if I needed to. Good thinking. Well, good luck. I'll Thanks, see what I can too. do, and I'll see if I can intercept the captain before he decides that he needs to find anyone else to arrest. But I can't guarantee that he's going to listen to me. Fair enough. And you, you see him stand up from the table and look over at Annie somewhat hesitantly, almost like he doesn't want to leave, but um, he just sort of shakes his head in, in final decision and uh, turns quickly and, and strides towards the back door. Um, you, look, you see uh, Stela kind of looking up and, and with her typical wide eyes kind of watching him go. Um, he didn't sneak out, but he slipped out. Out the back door he goes, leaving the three of you there. Uh, Sandy kind of well. watches him go. You see there's a little bit of a dreamy expression on her face as she does, uh, because uh, he is a rather uh, rugged and somewhat handsome fellow. Silas turns to Medrick and says, So, who are you really? Now that we're... Mandrake, with ease, not not eyes. You've got eyes. Right. They're right there. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> they are rolling in my face right now. <laughs> um. I've been thinking about what we need to do. Um, I'm going to talk to my family and see if they're willing to turn on the sea devils and help out. Um, do they even know about the bargain you made? No, probably not. The Mother Hydra would not let them know. You say that, and he looks at you. And... What? You don't say her name in public. All right. The, uh, the mother, though, as you think, doesn't often talk with people. Uh, this is... This was one of the few times I've ever communicated with her, and it's the only time I've ever seen her, so to speak. Um, like the gods, they rarely appear in person. Yeah. Or she rarely appears in person. Um, but I, I think I can persuade her to have us fight against the sea devils. And I think the key is the stone. The stone? Your sunstone. Uh, we will retrieve it. And it, it felt to me like it's only because they have the stone and they know something they can do with it that they feel strong enough to challenge the surface. I think if we take that stone, they may retreat. Oh, yes, we will take the stone and bring it back to the Temple of Ignis. I think it'll be a case of trying, fighting them to get to the stone. And once we have it in our possess possession, getting far away f enough from them that they yes. have another option but to retreat. Yeah. In any case, it must not be in their possession. No. Um, you may have an argument coming from... Uh, the lighthouse keepers as to who truly owns it but as long as it's not in the hands of the sea devils i agree 
the town should be safe. I have no qualms with it going back to the lighthouse. I would just like to bring it to the flamekeeper for study, briefly. I imagine once the church has it, they will not let it go. Not if it truly is a connected to your god. Maybe it could be split into multiple pieces. I believe it already has. It sounded like this was not the only one, just perhaps the only one here. A fragment. But that discussion is something that can happen later. Um, yeah. We agree it must not be in the hands of the sea devils. Um, I'm going to cast a little bit of druidcraft and uh, have it show me what the weather for the next 24 hours is going to be. Okay. Um, what, Storm uh, weather warning. How are you intending to manifest the vision? Is it uh, a tempest in a, in a, in a cup? Is it... Uh... It's a little... Uh, it, it's probably a little... Uh, not a weather icon, but a little bit of weather uh, coming down onto his hand. Like he holds his hand up and then if there's a cloud and rain, it's going to be rainy tomorrow. If there's like a little beam of sunlight, then it's going to be sunny. Uh, if there's snow, then he's going to wonder what the heck's happening. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to check the spell real quick here. Yeah, I think it just literally says it tells you what the weather's going to be like for the next 24 hours. Okay. It's not uh, it's not super much, but so you you hear um, Silas utter a few words that have a weird resonance to them. They seem to have underlying um, nasal syllables almost, um, as as though there's a secondary voice that carries the sounds, and he he waves his hand on the table, and across the table. Um, manifests a low mist um, for a second or two that just sort of appears and grows kind of as he waves his hand across the, uh, the table. And the mist kind of bubbles and roils and then erupts upward to form uh, clouds that seem to grow from a central point and then lightning flashes across the table in this weird sort of momentary thing of it kind of erupting outward from a central point across the table, and then the vision fa fades. Um, I wasn't expecting lightning. Uh, so basically, we're figuring uh, mist and maybe a thunderstorm? Make a nature check. In fact, all three of you oh. can if, if you are trained in nature. Yeah, Silas I... makes it regardless, but... If you're trying nature, you can you can roll. I am I got like minus one for nature and I'm not Hey, okay, I got a nine. <laughs> You've cast the spell a few times, and usually it's a small uh, small element. It's 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 a simple little spell that's meant to sort of reflect kind of like shadow what what the weather is going to be. This manifested more strongly than you're used to. Uh, and it felt important. It felt as though it was telling you something beyond what you were seeing. It was probably a sign. This was emboldened. <clears throat> this was strengthened. This was unnatural weather. This oh, okay. is the coverage of what's going to happen and change. Hmm. It's being actively manipulated. Yeah, I think... I have a feeling they're going to be controlling the weather. Does does Ignis have influence over the weather? Like, would something of his be able to help them with that, maybe? I'm not sure. Hmm. I think can make a religion, yeah. religion roll. Yeah. <laughs> What did I get? Okay. Oh, that's not bad. So, Medric, in 
in the earliest stages of, of joining the Fellowship of Ignis, there's a lot of, of broad statements that they make about the power of Ignis. And you've come to accept the fact that Ignis is the source, perhaps, of, of all being, of all power, of all light, of all warmth, of all motivation, of all life, all the things living. Um, but the other element or the other part of Ignis is the bright star in the sky. And depending on, on and there would have been some debate among your teachers who usually were um, countermanded by wh whoever was the flame keeper in charge of teaching. Um, but the debate would have been, does Ignis control the whole sky or just the sun? And half the time the debate would have come down to all that is in the sight of Ignis is under Ignis's control. And the others would have been, it is a compromise between the gods, but none can stand up to Ignis. Everything under Ignis's sight is under Ignis's control, but if Ignis's sight is blocked by something else, then maybe not. Mm. Did you see the stone in the cave? Yes. Um, Oxia. The priestess um she had it on i think it was on a pedestal and there was a an inky black slimy creature she kept around it it was like a pet to her she moved it off at one point and i think it was um it was abs maybe absorbing the energy from it, uh, keeping it from from casting light over everything. Uh, but so the stone was not shining at all. What's that? The stone was not shining at all. Well, after I think it was still shining some, but after the creature, uh, at one point she called the creature away, and it start the. The stone started to brighten again until she sent the creature back uh, back to cover it. it. It seemed to be hurting the creature to cover it, but I guess I don't know if she was just hiding it or if she was maybe... Oh, hey, the lawnmower man is back. Um, <laughs> if maybe she was... Uh, reducing its I'm trying to think of a fantasy word uh, for signal splendor uh, it's brilliance yeah uh, if she was trying to keep it concealed from those that might sense it or keep it from doing them harm uh, uh yeah that, uh, bastard and defilers that as well. Um, so if we... I think there are two things we can try to do. We could leave tomorrow morning to go back to the spot and try to fight them in their, their den and hope that they haven't moved it. Or we can wait here in the town until night falls tomorrow and try to react to wherever it shows up. It seems risky, the first option. I mean, they might have moved it already. It's entirely it possible. We'd be going into their territory. Yeah. I mean, we made it out the first time, but... That was, a, that was a really big four-armed guy that was with her. He seemed to be the... It felt like they were both in charge, but maybe she was a little more in charge. Um, so she was higher ranking? Or, 
or I mean, possibly just because she was the priestess or maybe because she was the one that knew about the the stone, but it felt like he was arguing with her at some points. Uh, I don't I don't think he is relying on me to be on their side. Uh, she seems she seemed to have been impressed enough by uh, by the mother that it was like meeting her hero. She may very well have been fooled and and think that I am on on her side, but I don't think the other one is nearly so trusting. Um, so yes, they they may have moved it. I mean, if they're attacking the town, I don't know how they would attack with just the number we saw down there. Uh, you guys killed most of them. Mm. There must be other dens. Uh, but if we wait for if we wait for if we wait for it to come to us, then I mean we're risking some harm to the town because we don't know what's go, where it's going to show up. Uh, but I. I don't have any experience in this sort of thing. And he looks over at Medrick, uh, the only person he knows of who's been in a war, and Marie, the the only person who probably led people. <laughs> uh, Annie. Uh, Annie, sorry. Hey, not cross the streams. <laughs> As the ghost of Marie hangs on um, the table. Uh, hmm. The uh, the thing that uh, Annie would point out is that if there's multiple and we just go back to that one, where the the city is in just as much danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The door to the inn opens suddenly, and you see uh, someone wearing the tabard of a guardsman look in, look around the room, walk over to Sandy, say a few words. Sandy, you don't really hear the full conversation, but Sandy gives this innocent expression and shrugs her shoulders. And smiles at the fellow who turns and leaves. Um, then you will probably notice, uh, Annie in particular probably notices that uh, Sandy shoots an, uh, a look towards the back door just as the guard leaves. Fair enough. Okay, well... What was that? People are that. Looking for him already. What was that? You cut out. People are looking for him already. Wow. Mm. Well, hopefully he got to the ship. I think he might still be in the kitchen. Well, he left through the back door, so. Oh, okay. Hopefully he got there then. Mm -hmm. so, um, but yes, that is my my opinion on it, is that we should probably try to secure defenses here. Yeah. Silas, do you have any ways of contacting uh, Jonas from the lighthouse? No. No, I'm afraid my uh, my abilities are only in the immediate area. Okay. Um, I was able to stare into the light, but if we capture the light and it has no covering, so many people might be harmed by it. I'd forgotten the that. Yes. What? The best I can offer is a backpack. <laughs> uh, I'll ask Nora. Yeah, we'll have to. Uh, I mean, maybe that's. That can't be their only thing, but I mean, maybe that's what they're relying on is people looking at it. Uh, but we shall. Yeah, we'll have to keep that in mind when we go for it uh, not to stare too closely 
You do recall that in, in the lighthouse itself, um, it was opened up to reveal that light, but there actually was a, a small covering on it. And you also remember that uh, Wish was commissioned to build a, a container for it specifically. Yeah. 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 Um. So if we could send a messenger or a delivery guy to pick up the container and bring it back here before tomorrow, that might be something we can do. Um, or we could just see about getting like a heavy box to put it in in the meantime. Okay. Um, uh, well, I have to go pick up my stuff at at the Wyndham's place. Uh, anyways, I can see if maybe I can get like a, a heavy chest or something big enough to put it in that should keep anyone from seeing it yeah it's a poor uh, town so you know that you can buy wooden crates fairly easily yeah mm. the conversation lulls a little the, bit the, as you notice sand the, the on the table I was going to say, the blacksmith knows the dimensions of the thing, because he did that commission. Yeah. So, he'd have yeah. a better chance. He never actually, like, saw it enough to see the size of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than maybe Medric, who looks straight at it. Did I notice what, what the size of it was when I looked straight at it? <laughs> well, you looked straight into a beam of it, but it was yeah. still mostly obscured in the container that it was in. You never beheld it entirely directly. So, yeah, I think that getting the dimensions from Wish would probably be the best course of action. You do also remember that Jonah, Jonah, yeah. Jonah had heavy lidded glasses he put on his face um, when he was working with it so it is possible to to shield yourself somewhat yeah yeah um yeah i will see what uh what can be done there after i return the the uh cart um If I can convince my family to help or at least stay out of it, uh, well, it's what I'm hoping I can do. They may decide not to, but uh, if they won't help us, uh, or if they if they choose to fight us, I will fight along alongside you. Well, that's um, good to hear. Have no fears on my part, but there is a possibility that my uh, my yeah, yeah, may start uh, the wrong. and cut off your powers. <laughs> that got a bit garbled as both of you ended up speaking at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, Medric, what did you say? I was just going to say, uh, I hope mother uh, uh, that the mother doesn't cut off your powers. <laughs> I, if she can and she does, then that's what happens. I don't think she will. One of the benefits of worshiping something that doesn't always pay attention. Something unknowable. Uh, but we'll see. Either way, the town needs to be defended. Um, if we have to go out into the bay to get the stone, uh, we may be able to use one of my family's boats. Right. Who has the uh, pearls of water breathing now, by the way? 
you, I think you would have returned those to the. Yeah, the I think we pressed them. Um, okay. So yeah. nobody got yeah. them. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll we'll have to deal with that as well if uh, if we do have to go out. So, um, yeah, perhaps uh, the flame keeper can assist. I don't know. Um, I, to be honest, we have always been told to avoid the temple for what may now be obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yes, um, so, uh, Sandy so kind of sidles up to the table with a pitcher of water. I don't mean to be, um, uh, well, I don't mean to pry, but, uh, that guardsman was asking after your friend. Should I be concerned? I'll look at Annie and Silas and it's like... I just look over at... Uh, shoot, don't remember her name. You just said it. Sandy. Sandy and say, what friend? Well, the the one that was at your table just a minute ago. There's there's like a, he's there's like a, rather tall, there's like a, kind of handsome. Yeah, there's a... And then a looking like eyes to the side and it's like what friend sandy just following uh silas and annie's lead i'll just be like mm -hmm. <laughs> oh well if you happen to not run into your wait if you happen to run into your not friend again tell him he's not any danger it's not not anything that you need to worry yourself about. It's just him claiming to be himself. Well, I suppose you can't ask for too many people not to claim to be themselves. I don't know what that means. Exactly. Well, if you happen to see your not friend again, tell him he's welcome back. And she kind of winks and, and uh, <laughs> uh, turns and, oh, is there anything I can get you? Um, see those ladies over there? I'd, I'd like to pay for a room for the two of them. Oh, very well. I can do that. Both of them are together. Um, you would have to ask them if they'd prefer separate or rooms together, but I'll pay for it. That's very generous of you. <laughs> Anything else? We found them and they need a place to stay until they get back to town. Poor dears. Looks like they need to change their clothes, too. That might it's, help, yes. It's been a day. <laughs> uh, and, and they've been I'm saying, like, oh my god, Annie has so much money that I remember, like, all right, she said princess in one of those names. <laughs> <laughs> and the S's I don't have a lot of money on me at all. <laughs> the S's and princesses are dollar signs. Um... <laughs> But she uh, she she turns back and then actually walks over to the the pair of them sitting there and uh, starts to talk with them. So um, I guess unless there's anything else uh, that you need to know, I'll I'll head out and and return the uh the cart and probably see you tomorrow morning sounds good we'll be here this location i can meet you here yes okay and make sure your family fights on our side <laughs> i will do my best but it it's possible that just Having them not interfere might be the best solution I can get, but All right. there's a there's a number of us, so if if they can be convinced to assist, then it might be worth it. Um anyways, uh, uh 
good luck yourselves as well. Thanks. And he breathes out a big sigh. Um, and then he'll head out to the, uh, the cart. Okay. The cart is still there. As is the, yeah. as is the animal kind of patiently waiting. What is uh, what are Medrick and Annie planning to do, if anything? Or are you just going to bunk down for the night? I'm going to go talk to uh, the flame keeper at the temple at some point. Okay, Annie. Before going to bed, for sure. Um, about what time is it now? It's just before supper time, or Basically, around supper yeah. time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll have some food, and then uh, I'll also pay for food for Joan and Silva because I don't have any money on them. Uh, and yeah, I think I'll, I'll just go back to my room. Um, if I don't end up hearing anything from Gaetano by morning though, um, I might try to get, see if the ship is still there. Okay. Um, why don't we turn to Medric then? All right. As you're heading off to the, to the temple. Yep. To speak with Flamekeeper Tidewell. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's easy to find the the temple, of course. Uh, you would know it by heart, but in the sort of thickening clouds that are making the, the light a little dimmer, making everything a little bit uh, less uh, less expressive. Um, the the light from the uh, eternal flame itself does seem to cast uh, broadly around the area. And it's almost as though it casts a nimbus of color, uh, kind of bringing and spreading its its strength there. You notice that there are a few uh, people there who are talking to the flame keeper um, about. You're not sure what exactly about, but it, it looks like it's a a, a friendly discussion. Um, mm -hmm. Possibly the flame keeper has been reaching out to more people, or maybe it's one of the many services that the flame keeper provides. You know that the the Tidewell does oversee um, funerals is a is a big one because uh, they will burn the bodies essentially with the, with the proper rites of respect, uh, but they are sometimes called to do even more simpler things. Um, sometimes they are actually called for blessings over children or weddings, or uh, or uh, endeavors even. Um, you've seen caravan keepers have come in from Pitajun who stopped in specifically to have their caravan blessed by the flame keeper before heading back out of the road. So nice. they'll be in the watchful eye of Ignis for the way. But uh, Ignis, please set these bandits on fire. <laughs> it's usually not quite as explicit as that, but um, more usually. Ignis told me to burn things. <laughs> um, although some of them would probably request something that like that. It's not within the, the purview to grant such boons to outsiders. But a blessing here and there is definitely within that. Um, but the uh, the flame keeper uh, seems to end the discussion, uh, kind of coming as you are coming closer, uh, and bids them uh, farewell for the evening, uh, and then uh, sits back on the bench, which is up against the central pillar of the uh, fire itself, and sees you and nods. And I'll nod back. Gestures for you to come over. I'll go over. Welcome, Medric. It's good to see you again. You Thanks, Fitz. Look like you've been I, I look like shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such is the life of a Kamar. Yeah. Have you come for more lessons? Yes and no. I, I don't know if I have time for more lessons. I bring more dire news, unfortunately. Uh, my friends and I of which I'll speak of later. Uh, we went to deliver... Basically, we made a delivery to the lighthouse. And I... I'll basically, like, uh, just recount all the uh, adventures that went on, like, everything at the lighthouse. Jonas, or Jonas saying, don't look into the light, and me, like, looking into the light because Ignis. And feeling that the light is a part of Ignis. She looks um, um, kind of up to that point. Um, you know, the story is uh, a story. It doesn't really mean anything to her. 
but she looks up rather sharply when you mention the sunstone. Um, as it was I don't used. use sunstone itself, but like the rock, that's the lighthouse. But do you describe the sensation the of, of being in the, the, the power of it? Yeah. And then I'll mention the adventure we went on and how um, Angus said that the light or the star stone, but not the star stone in the words were like fell to sea and was retrieved by a ship. And it's like, could this be a part of Ignis? And she kind of nods sagely and kind of thinking it over. There have been stories of Ignis granting his blessing or even descending to the world from time to time. Such stones are not unheard of. They serve many purposes. Uh, this one sounds like it, uh, it fits the stories very well. They were truly blessed to have such a piece of the, of the mighty uh, flame at their beck and command. But I am disturbed by it having been taken by these creatures. They plan to attack tomorrow evening. Possibly with the stone, using it as a weapon. And she looks quite disturbed at this. This is not good news. No. What What do you mean by they plan to attack? Uh, my, one of my house? friends, Silas. This is what he told us. We got separated in the underwater base, and he was able to bargain while we were fighting for our lives. And they plan to attack the lighthouse? No, they plan to attack Elfwater. Oh. To what end? Something about the destruction of land dwellers. I won't let that happen, but that's oh. what they're planning on doing. This is most disturbing. The power of so, Ignis no. is tremendous. And there are creatures who know how to wield it. Sounds as though these might be some. I'm not sure if they knew how to wield it. Silas also said that the stone was covered by some inky, gross creature. It's like they're trying to suppress it until they need it. Perhaps. Have you ever heard of this type of weapon being used in battle before? Oh, there are many stories of, of Ignis's blessings, yes. Not for a long time, but there have been more. I have heard from the central spire, the fire of origin. They have said that there have been more falling recently, discovered in different places. There are a number of stories as to why that might happen. In times past, it was thought that perhaps Ignis was trying to seed the world with more of his strength. The world was in danger. Other times they were seen as signs that there were great people or, or great rulers, great leaders to arise in under the banner of Ignis. In this case, though, it sounds as though this rock fell some time ago. Before anybody can remember. Do I remember like a Roughly when Angus said it fell, like thousands of years ago or hundreds? It was something inherited by him. He didn't know when it actually had fallen. Okay. Uh, so at least a hundred years-ish. I mean, depending on how old you think Angus is, I suppose. <laughs> um, like 80-ish. I'll leave the numbers out. <laughs> Medrick is not a guy of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps it was lost, buried, and then found... And then to shine light in this lighthouse is an honor to Ignis. But to be wielded by these creatures and taken against the town could be disastrous. On many levels, not only in its raw power being used, but if people were to think of the stone as dangerous to them, if they were to realize it were a piece of Ignis itself, they would come to distrust us, and we cannot let that happen. I know. Um, I mentioned Ignis to Jonas, the keeper of the lighthouse, or the future keeper of the lighthouse. 
he seemed interested. This is me trying to like score brownie points with um, Nora Tidewell to get recruits, but <laughs> I am glad that you spoke well, Vignus. I'm sure that he must know the power within the stone inherently, if not know the stories behind it. I mm. will perhaps make a trip out to see this Jonas, uh, but he does not have the stone now. No, I did mention the temple to him, in that the Everflame had similar properties. Well, perhaps he will come to me. That's what I'm hoping. But in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, this is very dangerous with this this stone being used against us. It must be re recovered, it must be saved, or, and it pains me to say so, it must be destroyed. Destroyed? The power of Ignis is absolute, but the fragments of, Ig of Ignis which fall to the, the world can be overcome. I'll recover it, and if I can't, I'll destroy it. It will not be Would easy. Would be mad at me for destroying the stone? Would I fall out of favor with Ignis if I destroyed the stone? His stone? It is with each of us to form our relationship with Ignis. If you are pious and you speak to Ignis in your own words, then you can explain what is to happen. Perhaps you will even be granted a boon, or the very least, know that the flame is lit within you. Thank you. Tell me, do you ever use a shield? Well, yes. And I'll pull the, like the shield out of my... Because I'm assuming it's, stra it's strapped to my back right now. Probably. A fantasy yes, world, I which everybody one. wears all their armor and all their weapons all the time. So, <laughs> sure. sure. It's just like there in the back. Um, and she takes a look at it. Ah, uh, yes, yes. It's well made. Hmm. Come to me tomorrow. Before any battle starts, I, I may have something for you. Will do. And, uh, Lamekeeper tied well. How common are secrets in this town? My friends, Annie and Silas, they're good people, but they hold secrets. They've been revealed, but... Oh? But well, she's kind of waiting to see if you're going to tell the secrets. I'm not sure if I can relay them myself, because I promised I wouldn't. So but is it common for everybody except me to keep secrets in this town? Ah, but it sounds as though you're already keeping secrets, if not your own. Well, I suppose. She kind of chuckles a little bit. There are many areas of shadow, even when the brightest light is cast. And secrets are kept for many reasons. There are things to know about Ignis which you are not ready to know. One could call those secrets too, I suppose. Disappointment face. <laughs> but as for this small town, it has lived in shadow for so long that I think many believe it is the way they should leave. There are many secrets here. I have come to understand a few of them. I see deeper shadows than ever before, and know that there are still many secrets held. But if you have no secrets of your own, then you are the light bringer. You are the one to shine in this darkness. And the things that hide in the shadow may scurry from you. The only reason I will not immediately reveal their secrets is because well, I, I made a promise. Maybe eventually, but 
do know that none of them are evil. And she kind of smiles uh, at, at, you know, they're not evil. Um, <laughs> there are many. And, uh, how much of a bad thing is it that I told the tax collector that my name was spelled M I D R I K instead of M E D R E K. <laughs> asking for my <clears throat> asking for a friend named M A D R A K. <laughs> uh, and she kind of chuckles. It is an honest mistake that perhaps you can repair. I, I didn't hear that. I just heard like the. Uh, yeah, speeding truck. car driving by. Uh, there are disadvantages to our, 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 our later start of the days. Apparently this is the most busy time for noisy things. Um, but she kind of she kind of chuckles at it and, and, and says, it was an honest mistake and could be made by anyone. But right, we right. respect the rules that we live under. We understand the need for hierarchy. We understand the need for people to come together and share their fire. So we right, do, right. We do pay our taxes. So I should uh, inform the collector that it was an honest typo, verbal typo. I think that would be the best, don't you? Yes, yes, of course. Is there anything else that troubles you, Medric? Or shall we Aside begin from the attack tomorrow, not really. Well, what are you going to do about that? I can defend the temple and I can <laughs> offer some aid, but I am not trusted well enough here to rally anyone else. Like, player note, I was going to say something and I just, like, all of a sudden forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. To all of us. Yeah. Well, perhaps give me a moment to, like, to like unfart there. <laughs> perhaps it's the just going to take a keyword to like draw the thing out of it. Fair. Perhaps in the meantime, we can begin our our night's lessons. Perhaps in there you'll find the necessary illumination. Yes. And uh, she begins a, a, a lesson about uh, the, the reflection of fire, which is an odd place to start. But it, it gets into strange parables at that point. Make a religion check. No, no, no not start menu. Control, Alt, Roll, Dice. Wow, okay. It's a little difficult to follow, and you're not sure what practical knowledge this might have for you as a soldier, but there, there is something there that gives you pause to think about for the rest of the evening. Um, it also might be the sweet-smelling incense that she uses to, to, uh, to infuse the area. Uh, and then you kind of remember that most of our lessons, most of our lessons have been accompanied by some sort of scent. And weirdly, thinking about the scent enables you to recall parts of the lesson. Cool. Um, meanwhile, Silas, you're delivering the cart back? Yes. Yeah, he'll return it and get the deposit back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, then, uh, and then he'll head over to the smithery, the blacksmith. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they, they, they do an inspection of the cart, but there doesn't seem to be any particular damage to it. Um, what do you do about the cargo that's on the cart? Did Annie take um, the box that she had? We probably or? would have left that with... Uh... I would have taken my box. Okay. So you get that rather, rather bulky box. Um, but yeah. yeah, we probably would have left that with uh, uh, the stuff we took out of the chest. That was the ship stuff, uh, right? That's what G Man claimed. Yeah, it was like taxes or something. Probably, yeah. 
uh, then we probably, uh, I think we probably would have given that to him to uh, return, or at least Silas would have anything he had grabbed, he would give to uh, to Gitano. not Gideon, Gitano, <laughs> uh to uh, return to the ship. So I don't think there'd be anything left in the cart. Okay. But uh, seeing it not uh, not badly damaged at all, they give you your pause back. The horse is your, or the donkey? Yeah, the horse is mine. Blondie! Is it, is it mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, right, Blondie. Yep. Uh, yep, and you, you walk with your horse over to the uh, familiar uh, uh, blacksmith that you can hear the, the sound of the hammer striking metal. Um, you don't see the assistant around, but you know your way around this place. Uh, yeah. And find uh, Wish uh, in the, the heart of the uh, very hot forge. Um, stripped down to the, the waist and the very, very tough muscles uh, kind of uh, rippling with every stroke of the hammer. Um, you, every time you visited Wish, there's sort of a sense that he's working out some anger. And it it usually doesn't get lighter strokes when you appear, um, mm -hmm. whether he knows you're there or not. Uh, but once again, the sort of uh, large tattoos on his back um, tell a story you've never heard before, um, and you're not really sure what, what they are. They're not t typical. Um, but he uh, sees you come in, and not unexpectedly... The hammer blows are stronger and louder, but only a few more until he uh, extinguishes the sword you think he's working on. It looks like a sword, but it's broad and a little bit longer than you would have expected. Yeah, I wait till he's done. Uh, he he uh, puts the 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 metal in the in water. Steam flows up. And he looks at you with a grimace. He made the delivery all right then. Yes, it has been delivered. Good. Oh, and you should know your uncle is looking for you. You should know better than look for you here. Yes. Mr. Wyndham. You probably refer to him formally most of the time. Uh, Mr. Marsh. I think something's going to happen. I think something's going to attack the town tomorrow. We're trying to find a way to stop it. But if you can convince you and yours to find a safe place to stay, then Well, that make you. You'll do as you wish, but there's so, something coming from the sea tomorrow at midnight. I think this was some sort of terrible joke. If your uncle hadn't said something similar, I suppose there are benefits to having connected with the Marsh family. Few of them. But I sent him packing. He wouldn't tell me what or where or how. But it sounded more like a threat than anything else. And you're telling me this is real. The sea devils are likely to attack tomorrow if we can't stop them. And I think our best way to fight them might be to be here when it happens. Kind of but voice. I would prefer you and uh, I think it was Carol. Carola. We're safer. So what I don't did you know do? any specific... What did you do to cause them to want to attack this place? Nothing. 
<laughs> we... Hey, I didn't do anything to provoke the attack. They were attacking anyway. There's a random um, laughter coming from the air. It's it, it's coming in your mind. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> they kidnapped a young woman from the lighthouse. We went after her to bring her back. And while I was there, I f or while we were doing that, I found out that they were planning to attack tomorrow. I don't know exactly what their attack will be, but. Well, your uncle seemed to know something about this. How am I supposed mm. to take that knowledge? I know your family's involved somehow. No, I suspect they are. If I can do anything about it, they'll be fighting to help us. That'll be the day. The Marshes have never done anything to help this town. Nothing you would accept. So but I'm here to warn you. There's to be an attack somewhere on the town sometime tomorrow. At midnight tomorrow. Midnight. And you don't know what it will look like, or why, or where. I know little of the Sea Devils. They did not seem to be terribly sophisticated. I expect they will just try to swarm the town and kill what they can. But they have stolen something that they think gives them power. I aim to stop that. Sounds like the Baron should be notified more than me. We've tried. The Captain... I'm not sure if he believes us. I'm not sure if many in the town would believe. It's been a long... long time since... since anyone was taken by the Sea Devils. There are stories. Usually that someone deserved to be taken. He looks I don't know if I believe that anyone deserves to be taken, but I know that if my family does work with them, it will be against me. Easy words. Then I am here for... for the chain and the shield. Sounds like you're going to need them. He stomps off, goes back in a couple of seconds. It's better than you deserve. But I don't make anything better than the best. No, you don't. Uh, he'll take the stuff and give Aloysius a look, not really know what else to say, and he'll... Let's say, keep yourselves safe, and then he'll turn and walk out. Keep yourself safe as well, for Nikki's sake. Then very quickly you hear the hammer starting up again. Actually, first it would be the bellows starting to heat the flame, to heat the steel. Um, but you do have your, your chain and your shield. And they are of high quality. Cool. Does that give them any effects or just their... Uh, they look nice. The chain is non-magical plus one. Ew. Keen. Um, the shield nice. is is not... It uh, doesn't have that benefit to it, but it does have... Um, it is very durable. 
Cool. Um, it is a little heavier than you were expecting, and you can see that it's it's somewhat reinforced. Um, but essentially, it would not it would not be again not magical, but it, it is of high quality, which means that it would be resistant to uh, some kinds of damage. Cool. Oh yeah, that's right. I can't t uh, change stuff in a PDF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll write that down somewhere so I don't forget. Um, uh, okay, yeah, and then I guess he'll head home after that. Uh, he'll just put the shield and the chain in the... Uh, or I guess he'll carry them <laughs> <laughs> on the walk back to the village. Okay. You head back home. And your front door is unlocked. That's well, it's a small village that he shares with his family. The doors are probably not locked normally. And uh, as you step in the front door, you see sitting in a chair facing the door is the um, well, you describe Athenos. What do you, what is your vision for Athenos? Um, Older guy, um, late 50s, early 60s. He's a fisherman, so probably hard life, lots of wrinkles, leathery skin, uh, hair is solidly in the middle of going gray. Uh, very stern, very tough and rugged. Uh, he's not necessarily like, he's not muscular, he's not wiry, but he's solidly built and uh, can definitely uh, pull up a lobster trap should they uh, need one pulled up. Uh, fairly imposing. Uh, he, as uh, the others may or may not know, because they probably wouldn't have met him, uh, he's the family's main interact, uh, main contact with the uh, town in terms of selling their fish. Uh, uh, he's a hard man. He's probably not a nice man. Uh, and uh, he makes sure things are done the way the family wants them done. So. Now, to clarify, did you go back to the village or did you go back to your home? Because you have a home in the town. Yes. Well, he would be heading to his home uh, in the village. Okay. Um, <laughs> now you just confused it again. Are you going back to the I don't village? Have a home. I don't have a home in Elf, Elfvater. Okay. Uh, I have a home in the village. Okay. I wasn't sure. Marshmallow. The, the Marshland village. Okay. I thought at one point you had said that you did have a Marsh house pit. in, in Elfvater, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't wrong or was wrong on that. Yes. At some point, it will be called the Marsh Pit. <laughs> the Marsh Because <laughs> the, um, the, the town itself or the, the, the Marsh Clan place is a little further away. Um, yeah, he walks a few miles along the coastline uh, anytime he's going into or back, so... Uh, he's this, used to the path. And at this also, point, that's why he's got a horse. Fair enough. At this point, too, the so the, the the way that I'm envisioning this particular point is, you end up going kind of north, uh, kind of north northwest along the coastline, which heads directly to uh, Cape Raven, the massive, very uh, very uh, imposing um, uh, stone isthmus essentially that leads out to the water and on top of which uh, is actually the the chateau where the baron lives but at low tide you can travel along the shore side of the cape and actually travel over a land which is revealed by water to get to the uh, the marsh uh, um, village at high tide, you either have to take a boat to get around or you have to take the long route, which basically goes all the way inland to where the, the cape uh, lowers down, uh, kind of like a ramp meeting the, the land and go through the forest, which is about twice as long. Um, fortunately, yeah. it's low tide at this particular point, so you're able to take the, the quicker trip back. Okay. Um, you do have to be careful when you're riding the horse through that area because most of the stones are rounder. It's not as smooth, uh, but you're used to the trip as as is your horse as well. Yeah, and that uh, for that one, he would like uh, probably the the ones of the woods he would be riding. The uh, one uh, through the uh, 
the wet area, he would be just uh, walking the horse. Yeah, and picking your, your, your travel a little bit more carefully, which makes sense, especially with the horse, who would be hesitant to ride very fast. But you've, you've ridden back now, or walked back, I should say, back and, and come to your, your, your house. Uh, the simple one among the uh, probably dozen or so different buildings that make up the, the compound, if you will. But to find, uh, um, uh, man, I had his name just a second ago. Athanos. Athanos, yes. Uh, mm. Sitting in that chair, seemingly waiting for you. Um, with his arms crossed and the usual sour expression on his face. Mm. When I say I'm a, I uh, take my jacket off and hang it up and say, Sir? There's been a sign, boy. I've been trying to find you to confirm, but there's been a sign. The waters have yes. run red. Sorry? The waters have run red. There's a fight to be had. Yes. Um, that is what I'm here to, to tell the town, well, to tell the village, uh, actually to tell the, the clan, I'd refer to them because that can be non-family members. Um, I'll gather the rest and you can tell us all at once. Nicodemus has been put to safety. Good. I think we'll need it. Um, where were you? I was in the bay. Oh, by the way, that sign. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I must, uh, I must meditate at the stone first it'll take time to gather everyone together so you'll have your time uh silas was it just uh uncle and, uh, and then uh pushes he'll... by you through through the door um as he as he passes by the sign was here but you were nowhere to be found that's not acceptable he just kind of walks by the sign happened because I wasn't here. I know what the sign means. And he kind of looks at you with a little bit of surprise and then nods slowly as if... And, he, and then I sort of backs down a little bit uh, right after. And he stops off, presumably, to gather the clan. Uh, yeah, Silas would just put his stuff away. Um change out of the wet and dirty clothes into something that's been recently washed um, and then uh, um, I assume that uh, Silas so would assume that Nicodemus being uh, moved to safety probably means he's with his aunt um, presumably or one of the cousins maybe yeah um yeah he'll just head straight to the uh i'm assuming probably what there is is um underneath the biggest place which probably would be for like, his aunt's place it'd be like a almost like a root cellar looking thing because they don't live in terribly nice houses so it's not anything too uh, too wealthy looking, but uh, basically he'll go down into that little cellar area, and uh, it probably have certain accoutrements of uh, like there'd be a fishing theme to the place, uh, maybe like some old fishing nets. Um, There'd be rough benches uh, for people to to sit on, um, and there'd be a almost a, a, on an altar or like an altar. There'd be like a large stone with carvings in it, uh, some sort of language that 
human eyes don't like to look at. It feels like it squirms, even though it doesn't move. Um, and there probably would be a few carvings on the stone of uh, snake-like features, uh, um, possibly a woman's face surrounded by uh, by some snake uh, insignias, not really insignias, but a snake motif. Um, kind of I think adding, that adding to this also, right. I think that uh, um, the walls themselves are mostly just dirt. But exposed oh. along two thirds of the walls are the massive ancient roots of trees that kind of twist sure. and turn and are exposed in the little bit of light that's down here uh, that themselves have a bit of a greenish and gray hue. Okay. Um, and yeah, he basically goes to the end. Hello, cat. That's not your stuff. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Sorry, MK was see. investigating uh, tea and such. Um, yeah, he goes to the uh, to the stone and sort of. I mean, it's not strictly prayer; it's kind of meditation slash prayer slash communing. Um, and I. Th think this room is kind of a sacred area so that people don't normally just enter it. Um, so he can expect a little bit of privacy. Uh, like they, they won't just go walking right in. Uh, they'll probably wait until he's done before uh, coming in. Um, and he attempts to reach out to uh, Mother Hydra. Uh, and, uh, let's see, uh, Mother Hydra, as I, as I said before, when we last talked, I have a plan. These sea devils, they are not like you they are below you they are they are nothing i think that though i told them we would help them i think it is best if we were to work against them. This town does not trust us. From what my, from what the elders have said, the last town did not trust us either, nor those before it. For we worship you, someone, uh, or you, a, a being that Others do not know and do not trust. They hate what they don't trust. I think it is best for you and best for our clan if we were to help the town against the sea devils. To show them that there's no reason to mistrust us. Many of the town folk live with us. We have our secrets, which I mean, have to be secrets, but I mean, that's why the town doesn't trust us. Uh, but I think perhaps if the town knew us better, then perhaps the clan could grow in influence in this area if 
if we were spending less time having to worry about defending ourselves from the town if it decides to push us out as the last one did then we could become so much greater we could bring so much more glory and power to you if that is what you if that is what you wish if it is not then I need a sign for I wish to help the town against these I don't think the sea devils are in our best interests. I think becoming man, there's lots of traffic today. Um, yeah, he uh, he looks up to where uh, uh, Uncle Athenos is going. It's just a thing he does. Um, I think our future... I think we may have a... I think you may have a better future if there were more of us. But I need to know what you, what you wish. Uh, and then he'll... Uh, he'll go silent and back to just calming his mind slowing his heartbeat waiting for hopefully her to send him a sign if not he will probably find a sign and assume that means something <laughs> so you, uh, you you make this appeal sorry what was that you, you cut out like halfway through Oh, look, a chicken making me. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you make this, this appeal at this center of, uh, of focus, this, this gnarled stone that's been carved probably for generations. You, you've you've mm -hmm. known this stone to have come to here when the family moved here. One of the heaviest things they could have possibly carried, but it seemed important to... A focal yeah, point. it's not something we made at all. Right, and it's something inherited, essentially, and, and carefully brought to this carved-out hole in the ground, essentially. And you kind of take a deep breath and, and open up your awareness to what's around you. You know that uh, there have been times when the the information has been delivered, the, the, the messages have been sent in the smallest of ways, in the most subtlest of moments, and part of your upbringing since you were a child was to pay attention to all of these little changes around you to see where um, the, the the reality of uh, the mother lies around everything and how you can read and understand that and then you feel a, a weird squirming in your pocket as Gideon kind of pokes its head up out and kind of hisses at you a little friendly and then kind of uh, Dodge dives out of your pocket, spreading its wings to fly around the room a little bit uh, as you, you kind of follow it uh, around. And I stay still and try not to be disturbed as uh, so much because it's like, damn it, Gideon, I'm waiting for no one. Well, <laughs> and as you see Gideon kind of flap a little bit and then find it feels like, and you've seen Gideon do this outside, finding an, an updraft, finding a bit of a flow of air in the room and, and zooming in on it and using that as the, as the propellant to move it forward further and further into the room. Uh, and then you hear it, not Gideon, but you hear uh, the whistling sound of a far away wind followed a few seconds later by the deep um, creaking and shifting of the trees outside caught in an invisible winds and as they twist uh, far above you, you can hear the, the, the transmitted sound rolling down the body of those, those limbs into the roots which form the walls here. 
and they seem to shift ever so slightly. You hear loud groans and cracks as they, as they take up the strain, the direction from far above, and they seem to, is it a trick of the light? Is it the motion of Gideon moving through? There seems to be a motion of these, these uh, roots themselves, and suddenly there's a small pop as one of the roots suddenly shifts. Uh, it has been around a large rock in the wall, and with the strength of these roots moving from the wind overhead, the rock cracks in two, and a few small pebbles fall out, but it seems as though the, the root itself has gripped tighter onto this rock while letting a few stones go free. Gideon dives at one of the stones and uh, 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 probably, I'm trying to remember if, Gideon, if uh, Gideon has limbs. No. No. So it would be with his mouth. He dives down and with the wings, yep. grabs one of the one of the stones in his mouth and kind of leans backward, uh, gobbling it with the the upward motion. Um, and then kind of spins around and lands on your shoulder. Uh, and kind of wraps around your, your neck and shoulder and then coughs forward one of these small stones to land uh, uh, land in your hand. Um, and you can make of that what you will. Can I make a roll on it? Because <laughs> sure. I am not sure. Let's call this in, um, hmm, how about an insight roll? Could it be religion? <laughs> I, um, I could be convinced for religion if you're trained in it. Uh, no, I'm just better at it. <laughs> <laughs> Insight is wisdom, but my wisdom is not great. Okay. Well, for someone who has to interpret signs, wisdom is kind of important. Oh, that's pretty good. Hey, good. So you, you try to understand what this is. Clearly, there can be no other explanation but this being... Uh, a, a a communication from the mother. Uh, oh yeah. This this place was chosen wisely as you as you come to know over the years, um, and the the interesting thing in the past has always been that while you know the nature of your people, you know the affinity with snakes and with uh, other creatures like that, the affinity with the trees is interesting because you you note that while they are not made of the same stuff they are clearly influenced and controlled and directed here more than anywhere else and this infusion of of roots when being exposed becomes another message and as you as you look at that and you 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 try to think how this sign might be interpreted you recognize the roots as the strength the grip that, uh, that Mother Hydra has on the world as played out through this natural creature. And the world represented by the wall, by the stone, means that grip must remain solid. It must be enforced. It must be strengthened. Uh, but the stone, being the world that's here, it is gripped tighter, but not destroyed. It is cracked, but not released except for a small element of it, a few key pieces. And as you look at the stone and kind of turn it over in your hands, you realize that there's a small chunk of crystal in this stone, which the rest of it did not seem to glitter or, or, uh, or show any sign of crystal whatsoever. And the way you interpret this seems to be that the, in the struggles that are to come, there will be losses and while the stone is preserved which you presume must mean the town perhaps key elements can be removed under the cover of battle for the betterment of the clan do i get any indication of yes or no to <laughs> what i was asking <laughs> there's a sense of ownership over the town 
So in a way, yes to protecting the town. But in the guise of, of flexing, in the guise of, of strength in protecting the town, it can be used as the cover to remove threats to the client. Okay. So it's yes to, to helping defend the town, and then, yes, maybe we can use that to yeah. get rid of impediments. There is, there is a, okay. a tremendous amount of subtlety involved, however, um, so that the, the, the clan, uh, the other side of this is that the clan will operate, but cannot be seen to operate. It must appear to have been a natural thing. You're a spy now, or a ninja. I'm a spinja. <laughs> uh, Welcome to the rogue life. Mm -hmm. Hashtag rogue life. Yep. Um, okay. Now, Silas uh, uh, looks at that and uh, gives uh, Gideon some uh, scritches around the top of his head. Uh, says, well, he just says it to the, the room at large and says, I think I've got my answer. Uh, and yeah, he'll, uh, he'll go and open the doors. I'm kind of assuming that we're meeting here. Like this is the, the village's holy spot where major things are said. <laughs> sort of thing. There are a couple uh, of different places where meetings can happen. This is one of them. Um, you would note that the, that Anathos is outside basically with the rest of them, but has held them back from going in. Um, at the request of having to see, speak with the stone, um, you were specifically left alone. Uh, so yes, I'll go up and open the uh, doors. Um, and much of the clan is here. A couple of dozen people, um, almost three dozen people at this point, uh, are filing in. Uh, you recognize your cousins. Um, there are smiles involved, although some of them are a little more nervous than others. Some of them clearly have been told what's going on. Some definitely have not been told. I'll smile back at them. Silas is feeling nervous, but pretty happy. He's not exactly certain what the removal of future impediments is going to mean. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, I think we're fine. Um, say, uh, actually, uh, if uh, Aunt Odega is there then uh, he'll address her first aunt, uncle, uh, family. Chosen. I have, um, as uh, I'm sure you noticed, um, there was an omen earlier, an omen of, of blood of conflict. I met earlier today with a priestess of the sea devils. There's some looks that go around the room, a little bit of confusion. Athanos seems to, to nod as if he kind of is expecting this. Uh, I was helping to bring someone back who had been taken by them. They were, well, going to eat her and the other captives. They're foul creatures at least those that I met. But while I was there, their priestess recognized who I represent, who we worship, though she called Mother Hydra by another name. She wished for our help in destroying the town and ridding the area of surface dwellers. There's a considerable gasp from a lot of the people in the in the room. 
as they're kind of looking from each other, uh, there's a little bit of murmur of discussion. That cannot be allowed to happen. I made an agreement with her that let me take the prisoners and leave. She believes that we are on their side, but we cannot be. I talked with Mother Hydra herself directly. She considers herself, or she considers them beneath her. There's a bit of a gasp as you mention talking to Mother Hydra directly, because that's not a thing that happens. No. Odiga in particular the seems almost shocked at this. Athanos looks skeptical. Some of the younger cousins are, are with rather puzzled, almost frightened expressions on their faces, imagining how terrifying that must have been. She has, this is, this is the first time she has spoken directly to me, but I was, I communed with her just now at the stone and she sent an omen. The town is hers, and though there may be some elements in the town that need to be dealt with in the future, she will not have the town, uh, she will not have her town destroyed. But we we cannot be seen as participating in its defense. So I will go myself. I am known in the town. And I will, t I, I will stop them and take what has made them so brave that they think that they can kill our families and and those who though perhaps we have not seen them in a while those who we still care for one of the younger cousins um vog steps forward are we to do nothing then he's a younger man in his uh, late 20s um, primarily known as a fisherman and primarily acts as one, but has been a bit headstrong and wanting to do more. Are we to just sit here while this happens? Whatever we do, we cannot be obvious. There are reasons, though I wish perhaps we were closer with the town, there are reasons we... We must maintain some distance. We must keep our secrets until we can perhaps share them with the town in the future. But there are those who would fight us if we acted openly now. I think that, I think that what we can do is one, this village must be protected. I do not know that if all of the sea devils are under this priestess's control, or if perhaps they see you as adjuncts of the, as uh, related to the town more than, hey, you get off the table. You know you're not supposed to be up here. Get in. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I have to motion Cousin Vok off the table. Um, uh, shoot, lost my place. Um, Where'd he go? Uh, MJ, I mean, Gideon. Yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, yes, I do not trust them. Uh, 
so I think we have uh, we must maintain the defense of of the clan here but the town of course has its docks and doubtless if the sea devils come in the docks are likely where they will land first if some of you happened to be there tomorrow at midnight then you would naturally have to defend yourselves Yvod kind of uh, nods a bit and, and, and steps back, but seemingly are, satisfied with this answer. But they are dangerous. Any who go are risking their lives. I will do what I can to keep you safe, but there's only one of me, and there, I, have no, I do not know how many of them there will be or what their plan is. I know that simply... They've said there will be a great crash of light and thunder that will begin their attack. Um, but those of you who have family in the town, perhaps you could go and make sure that they are safe. We need not fight, just protect those who are those who we care for. Odega steps forward at this point uh, and and smiles at uh, you, Silas, and turns to the rest of the crowd with a very Silas confident look. Definitely. He was giving orders. Uh, he will sort of nod his head and back up like a, a half step. What our cousin, the Chosen, is saying, to be clear, is that we will act, but we will not be seen to be acting. We will take the steps that we need to to make sure that those who are of our extended group are safe and those who are not do not require our protection. We will be seen to be friends, but not a threat. And while the agreement that we made with the sea devils, and she turns back to Silas and kind of nods, while that may have been in truth, more of a ruse, it can also work to our advantage should we be able to direct those who attack to the places we feel are best attacked. Silas, it's got that, uh, you know, in Metal Gear Solid, there's that and like the <laughs> thing would go over someone's head when uh, it's like danger. And it's like, uh oh. Mm -hmm. Silas is just just gonna stand there and listen. Uh, it's like uh, things are going kind of the way I want, but not quite. So, uh, yes. And it will require us to be prepared. I'm sure that Athenos will have specific words for each of you. Praise the mother, and there's a murmur around the room, uh, repeating that same rephrase. Praise the mother. And Silas says it loudly. Now, I wish to thank our dear cousin for these words of wisdom. We have much to do and much to prepare for. We will go now and do so. Praise the mother. Uh, actually, uh, I have something I've been waiting to say this for ages. Uh, uh, Silas uh, goes over to uh, his aunt and embraces her and says, Hail Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the whole joke behind the character for the last several yes. weeks. Has been <laughs> I, I played the character first and then remember that, realized this later, but uh, then it was like, yes, oh, this has happened. Uh, so, yes, he, he does do that. That's like just a, a close in, like, uh, uh, and then he waits because uh, he's about to be given orders. Okay. Is it break time now? I just got to use the washroom. Well, we're probably going to wrap up fairly soon. Oh, shit, okay. Because <laughs> it's uh, almost 4.30. Uh, it's only two and a half hours. You started at two. Yeah, yeah, and we normally run about three hours. What? <laughs> <laughs> I know time has okay. been difficult for these last several months, but... Uh... What is time? <laughs> well, Loki, he was hoping that going back to the later time meant 
going back to the four hour <laughs> session. I, I, I don't have the energy for that. I wish I did. Uh, okay. So, uh, so yes, what's next? So we return back to Annie who is there at the inn and, uh, uh, Joan and Stella are, are thankful for the meal once Sandy goes over and says that your meal has been covered, but they kind of insist on sharing the table with you. Yeah. Uh, and I'm fine with it. Joan more forward than, uh, than, than Stella. Stella still seems to be somewhat uh, uncertain about most things uh, and doesn't offer much in terms of, of of conversation but uh joan now feeling somewhat safer ironically because she wasn't part of the discussion about the town being uh attacked uh seems to be relaxing and uh, wanting to know more about the town and talking about it talks a little bit about about her husband uh back in uh, pit of june and how much she's looking forward to leaving in a, in a few days or when she can uh earn a bit more money um, because all of her possessions were on the ship that went over. Um, and so she doesn't have much. She does say that she's a very good seamstress uh, and, uh, and hopes that if there's anything that you need in particular, because you seem to be a wealthy patron, you get that impression, if not the actual statement, um, that she wants to, to keep you uh, uh, as a customer. Stela only yeah, yeah. says a few words here and there. Make an insight check. Uh, let's see, 14 on the dice. What is my insight? Oh no, I accidentally closed my thing. Give me two yeah. seconds, it's got And now we are introduced to Annika, a whole different personality. I'll be right back. I don't know why that accent came out. <laughs> uh, inside of the... <laughs> Sorry, what was that? 15. 15. You've noted there have been oddities about Stela. Her language seems to be very different. Um, but in particular, during this conversation, you come to to realize that Stela doesn't really start any conversation. Instead, once in a while, she seems to, to nod her head or, or shake her head and repeat one or two of the words that have been said so far. Um, she seems a bit shyer, but with, with Joan a little more, a little more comfortable. Um, but still seems to be uncertain as to as to what's going on. Uh, and uh, when Joan turns to her and asks, "So, what do you plan to do, Stela?" Stela kind of looks broad-eyed at her, and then at you, and then no is all she really answers at the moment. But what would you, what would you, and she, Joan seems uncertain as to how to ask. It's, it seems somewhat rude perhaps to ask as you think the questions that she has on the tip of her tongue are, what can you do? What are you good at? Do you have family? Uh, and then Joan seems to hit upon that last one. Uh, what, uh, do you have family nearby? And Stela uh, kind of looks at her with a bit of puzzlement and then shakes her head. Family. No family. How about you, Annie? Do you have family nearby? Is that what brought you to this area? Not nearby. Uh, I am visiting from Paravel. And her eyes go wide. Paravel. I've heard about the city, but I've never been there. Uh, my husband has said that maybe we might move there if the business goes very well. It's, it's a lovely place. I definitely would recommend visiting, at least. But why are you... And she kind of looks around and then kind of checks herself. Uh, because the, the interior of the, of the Three Bells is actually pretty nice. But you get the feeling she's really looking around her mental trip into the town, which has the appearance of a bit more shabbiness uh you know the, the the there is the constant salt air that comes in and seems to eat away at anything that was ever paint painted 
Uh, and after a while, the effort seems to have no longer been put forward to making things entirely all that pretty. Uh, why are you here if you're from Paravel? Sometimes you, you need to see other things. I do plan on going back. I don't plan on staying here very long, but... Well, perhaps you could come with me to Pitajun. I would love the company. Yes, company. Pitajun. You'd like to come too? Yes. Come too. Well, that's an idea. I'll have to talk to Medric and Silas. No, I... I definitely... I'm glad that you guys are okay and getting along. Yes, getting along. Do you speak any other languages, Dela? Yes. What, what languages do you speak? And she kind of try. it seems stymied for a moment, is trying to, to, to say it. Um, but she says something in an odd language. It sounds very sharp and very uh, strange to the ears. It, it, it seems to have a sound that comes more from the back of the throat than you'd be used to. What languages do you know? Uh, Dwarvish, Elven, Gnomish, and Halfling. Okay. Um, it doesn't sound like... The people that I talk to most, so yeah, no, that's fine. Um, it doesn't sound like any of those. Um, Zach would understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she kind of smiles, and when she realizes or, or sees that you don't understand what she said, um, other Silas and Medric might or Medric might understand. And she kind of nods and looks sad. They do. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, I'll make sure that they're enjoying their food and stuff. Yeah. What does Annie do to amuse herself for the evening? Anything? You got some reading to do or writing? Grand journal? Uh, She's going to write in her journal, definitely, because today was a weird and long day. She's also kind of preoccupied by the fact that, like, it's kind of improper to introduce oneself. Usually you are introduced. So I think this is the first time that she's actually, like, full-on introduced herself, and that's weird to her. And you, you also get the feeling that Gitano was not going to reveal that. He was very much waiting for you if you chose to reveal yourself or not. Um, mm -hmm. You're given the impression, too, that he has been traveling under the other name for a while and doing so deliberately. Pro but you sit there, um, the, the uh, supper crowd comes in, making the room a lot uh, more full. Um, the, uh, the smell of salt air and fish uh, comes in with a number of the fishermen who are done for the day uh, and uh, served up uh, a decent meal. Fresh bread has been made, um, so that smell also lingers with everything else. The fire is stoked, making it a bit warmer. Every time someone comes in, the, uh, the uh, cool night air wafts in with them, as does a small amount of fog. Um, I would like to write a quick note um, to the captain of the ship that Gaetano has been on. Okay. He's mentioned the name Captain um, Stoutheart a couple of times. Yep. Uh, and it'll be something along the lines of, um, if Gaetano hasn't been there yet, um, we need his things, but you should also leave port. Um, and... Uh, I will say that he'll be able to explain later. Uh, if he's if he's not there, he's in trouble, and we need his things to to get him out of it. 
uh, and I will ask uh, whoever is working the bar if they can have someone deliver this to the ship. And it is sealed. Okay, Sandy's okay. working the bar. Sandy's pretty much constantly there. Um, yeah. But, uh, uh, so you're having it delivered to the errant widow then? Specifically to Captain Stout? Yeah. Okay. Um, she... <laughs> Sandy has a, a delightful disposition most of the time. She's got this very kind and gentle uh, way about her, but there's something about uh, this sudden change which is sort of hilarious as she sort of uh, goes back just to the entranceway towards the kitchen and sort of bellows out, Barris, I've got work for you, you lazy slob. Kind of also <laughs> happily, but at the same time very commandingly. Uh, and you see a, uh, a, uh, a young human boy uh, come kind of sl uh, slow footedly coming towards the front, uh, and he's uh, eating on uh, or got a, a half loaf of bread that he seems to have been chewing on for a while. It's not even bothering to hide yeah. that. Um, but yeah, ba basically, uh, if he, he hasn't been there, we need his things uh, to get out of port and uh, where where I am, obviously. Uh, so that we can get his things. Okay. Uh, and that he'll be able to explain once the danger is past. Once the situation is dealt with, I think I would say. Okay. Barris has given the, uh, the order to go and, and, uh, and fetch, or go and take the message over. Um, he looks like a sullen teenager who's been told to clean his room. But uh, Sandy kind of uh, uh, laughs and, and messes up his hair, which seems to annoy him somewhat, and then tells him quite uh, strongly to go and do it. And then you'll have dessert. <sighs> There's a big heavy sigh. Um, but then he's out the back door through the kitchens. He is... Um, a teenager. Trouble, but he's worth it. He'll get the, he'll get it there. Don't worry. Perfect. The evening crowd thins out a bit. No word yet from Gaetano. No word of a message back. Um, you see, Barris has arrived back again, and kind of uh, set at one of the tables with a uh, a bowl of what looks like berries um, covered in sugar. Um, very simple, basic dessert. Um, with a little I do bit give of, the kid a silver. He kind of he kind of takes it, just sort of nods, not really a thank you or anything else, just sort of like, yep, okay. Um, but doesn't seem to have a return message. Um, Fair enough. As the evening winds on, still no sign from Gitano. The room thins out again. There's another crowd that comes in, as the the later evening. Uh, this crowd more interested in ale and wine than anything else. Um, there's a, a call for a performance, and somebody pulls out a lute and starts to play. It's not as good as Silas's usual performance. You get the feeling this was more of someone was taking advantage of the fact that they were coming out. They took their lute with them, and maybe it was one of their friends that called for the lute, kind of setting them up um, to perform for the evening. And they're okay. They seem to forget about half of the words to one of the songs. But the ones they made up were funnier. Fair enough. Nice. Um, I'll, I'll probably just stay. Uh, I'll, I'll write. I'll read. I'll just chill. Think about the events of the day. Try to recoup myself. Digest them a little bit. Am I back at the uh, Three Bells after I've gone to the Temple of Ignis? Just wondering. You do have a place to stay, I think, at the temple, but uh, okay. I also have a room at the three, at the three bells. Though. Yeah, yeah. They they offer yeah. very Spartan accommodations at the uh, the actual temple. Uh, it's yeah. literally we have these stones which are set aside for for the uh, people who who uh, are coming through for the initiates. Um, but but who knows? Have... After I write my wrongs about the um, <clears throat> typo, the verbal typo, I, I might be out of money and. <laughs> but that is, that is today is not this day, so I'm probably back at the three bells, like at like 10 p.m. or something. Okay. 
So you'll be coming in just as as the the raucous crowd is 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 underway. Um, you do you're used to it, but the ignean sig- uh, signifiers on your armor and on your shield still draw a bit of attention. Uh, and as you enter the room, there's there's a bit of a a who is that? Uh, but then the the lute player starts strumming again and and. The song weirdly is about uh, Ignis. It's it's not exactly a church song. It's a lot more about, uh, well, you might say the other kinds of flames usually caused by eating spicy foods. Somehow called Ignis's curse. It's a funny song. I just got a little extreme over the crowd with an ale or just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you spot Annie sitting in the corner kind of uh, writing away. And any, it's easy to see that Medric has come in the room because there's that. Sure. Stops. <laughs> yeah, the, the needle, the needle, the needle switch for a second, and then the the flames of Ignis, but not the the indignant flames of Ignis. Let's call it that. Uh, <laughs> song begins. I'll just sit down next to Annie. It's like the fucking sacrilege. Can you believe that? Sit down. <laughs> I kind of imagine you, you, you drink the beer back and then you kind of tip the tip the the the, the mug forward and just sort of breathe out a little bit of smoke. <laughs> Not on the book. Not on my notes. Oh, just, just, just sorry, sorry. I wasn't even. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's going to let him know that she sent word to the ship to. Either expect Gaetano, or we'll need his things to get him out of trouble. Uh, and if he hasn't been there, that he should probably, that, that they should probably leave the port. All right. And as you sit there, and the the, the night goes on, um, through the door uh, walks. Uh, I guess it'd be. Three individuals. Well, we'll just say two of the individuals. The other one be working. Uh, but coming through the door at first. Oh, here's, uh, I've lost the page. There we go. Uh, through the the door walks a, 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 a probably middle aged human uh, wearing a, a dark leather vest, uh, kind of a, a, a light puffy shirt underneath. Wearing a uh, a uh, broad round hat, um, with a some of an awkward gait as he walks in, and you hear the stomp of one boot, and then a hollow sound, uh, as you realize that the other foot has been replaced with some sort of uh, wooden replacement that's uh, kind of flat to the floor, and behind him, uh, as as he kind of enters and and uh, people. Uh, uh, notice him, but not very much. He smiles at the crowd. Uh, behind them uh, comes a dwarf uh, wearing an enormous, ridiculously large-sized hat, a large plumish uh, feather uh, stuck in it of a sort of green and uh, pink uh, plumage of some strange kind. Uh, darker shade of the skin, dark brown hair and large braids that are uh, dotted uh, in the torchlight as you realize there's little brass rings woven into the hair and into uh, a smallish beard. Uh, and uh, the first one kind of looks around the crowd, uh, spots uh, the boy, uh, Barris, and walks over to him as the other one walks in uh, behind and kind of takes a, a step towards the, the bar. The bar has... Uh, a step up area as well um, on the inside of the bar of course it's being run by halflings who already have a, a step up area for them to be equal a level but on the other side there's also accommodations for uh, the shorter folk like the dwarf who stomps up to the bar and orders some sort of beer uh, from uh, did I not say dwarf I might have left out dwarf somewhere in that uh, description as well yes. are they both dwarves or uh, no the no. first one is a human Okay. Uh, with a wooden foot, and the second one is a dwarf. Gotcha. Uh, you believe is probably female. 
Um, it's a little harder to tell. The The beard is thinner. It's usually the indication. Uh, but a dark, uh, a darker shade to her skin as well. Uh, but the, the taller man uh, speaks to Barris, who points over at Annie. And uh, the uh, guy ruffles his hair, which, again, gives the, the boy this sour look across his face, uh, as if he's just been uh, mutilated again. Uh, but then the, the pair of them uh, stomp over towards your, your table. Uh, the, the taller uh, human... Uh, with a very awkward gait, it, it's it's strange because not only is there the wooden foot, but the wooden foot seems to be the only stable part of him as he walks forward, and it feels like his his other foot is is moving more awkwardly and and bumping into chairs, and and uh, he is constantly kind of needing to grab onto the back of chairs in order to keep himself from tipping over entirely. Uh, in contrast, behind him, sure-footed, uh, is the uh, the dwarf. Uh, who comes with uh, four steins of beer, two in each hand, uh, and comes uh, walking uh, straight up towards the the uh, the pair of you. At one point, stepping in front uh, of the other one, who at that moment needs to find something stable to, to uh, lean on, and ends up putting his hand on top of her head uh, onto the hat, which she doesn't seem to flinch at, as if this has happened more than once. Uh, but she approaches the table with a smile and uh, uh, hands over. I'll extend a, a hand. And she hands uh, you one of the steins uh, in one of the hands and hands uh, uh, Medric the other stein. Grab stein. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Captain Stoutheart. And I've got terrible news. So drink up. When she hands the other one to her friend who I've heard things about you and uh, hands the other stein to her friend who kind of takes it one hand still placed on her on her uh, head, steadying himself. And she proceeds to drain the entire stein in one go. Damn. I'll take a sip of mine. Uh, whereas the, the taller Sorry. man uh, ten, seems to sip at it a little bit, kind of it looks like he's chewing it over for a moment. And then continues to sip just gently. Uh, you would be Annie. And I suppose I that makes you Medric. Nod. I'm guessing Gaetano got, got to you in the end. He did, he did. But I had to inform him of the first piece of bad news. That wave took some of our cargo with it. Most of his. I see. What? Unfortunate. And then, there was a certain foppish captain who insisted on visiting him and taking him as his own guest back to a, a room with some metal bars on it. Fair enough. I don't have to tell you that Gitano's been taken by the law. Now, he said no, nothing about it. He said it was fine and it would be a, a misunderstanding. But uh, I know Gaetano well enough to know that, well, misunderstandings follow him sometimes. He did say to come find you, though. Fair enough. So. Had he let you know of the situation as well? Well, he did say something about the town being attacked, and that we should probably sail, too, before that happens. I may have used some unpleasant words when I replied to him. Fair enough. He figured you might. <coughs> so, how can I lend a hand? And I think that's where I will call it for today, because I, I need a break. To, uh, to mentally cool. reset. But there you go. Works. Things right, have happened. Right. People have had their meetings. We'll return with the, the uh, next week with the, the call to arms, the uh, appeal to the people, I guess you might say, also in Silas's case. And we'll see what happens in the next day as we count down 
to attack. If you've enjoyed this, which I hope you have, then you can always watch it again. This will be up on on uh, well, it won't be on Facebook. I'll get my I'll get my things straight eventually. Special me gaming blah, blah, blah. on the YouTube. <laughs> uh, up on uh, YouTube at youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for Legends of the Drowned Dials in general or LOTDI The Great Confusion. And you can see the uh, the episodes have gone so far. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, though. Look for facebook.com slash LOTDI. That's like the whole acronym and everything. Uh, and that you'll find a yeah. where we can be uh, chatted, <laughs> that way. chatted to and chatted with. <laughs> Uh, there's also Watchers of the Drowned Dials, which is meant to be a place where you can or you can chat all about the game. Uh, I have... Did I add that link? I think I added that link. I've been adding more to the World Anvil site, continuing to add more and more articles about different places and different peoples and all that sort of thing. Uh, I'm not it sure... It will be good. I refer to, to that instead of asking you again for an explanation of the seven. <laughs> And that's that's the hope is it'll it'll provide some some uh, opportunity to little, learn a little bit more. So I suspect this week there'll be um, yeah we'll have a little bit more about Ilfodder, maybe a little bit about Captain Stoutheart or Gaetano. It's hard to say, but uh, the link um, in the following. Yep. Just let people know uh, I did put up uh, Annie's uh, new pick on the Pinterest page. Uh, we should probably put it on the Facebook too. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm just on not my computer, so I don't have yep. my Facebook. Wait. And all that art so far by George84. And uh, I still am not in the decision. I, I, did, I did shoot him a, a note to, to let him know that it has been revealed. Um, so And he was excited. And it was, it's exciting because I've been holding right. on to that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, does great work, uh, great turnaround, and I look forward to ordering more things from him. I just have too many people. I have too many NPCs. I kind of want to get uh, Captain Star Stoutheart and Gaetano and, oh, man, so many others. The Barons, uh, the Baron, the Baroness, uh, Flamekeeper, uh, hell, the Wintrips. I could do every. I, I'm talking like a lot here, but... Uh, I'll just go for it. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we do stream live. Now we have changed our schedule up because summer is nothing more than a distant memory. Okay, well. hey. Oh, sorry, Thorne. <laughs> well, I mean, sort of. Uh, it has, uh, we, we had a cool day today. We will be running from 2 p.m. Atlantic live on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 for the foreseeable future. Right now, the foreseeable future is next week. Uh, and we're not really sure if that's even true, but we're going to try. So we'll be back on Sundays for more game. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, if you do like it on uh, YouTube, uh, subscribe and ring the bell. Yeah, because that does stuff yeah. for everybody. It's like a whole thing. Uh, it causes dogs to salivate in electric land. <laughs> yeah, although uh, one thing uh, we might need to bring up is uh, YouTube apparently has stopped alerting people by email that uh, uh, channels are updated. So you kind of will have, uh, if you're going through YouTube, you'll have to keep, check it on your own. They will no longer let you know. Well, if you ring the bell and go directly to YouTube, your homepage should include us as when we mm -hmm. so yes. do And so. if you're on your phone and you get alerts from YouTube on your phone, then it'll pop up. And you can also uh, mark us as a favorite in Twitch, I believe, will get alerts when we do go live. Yeah. There you go. All of that stuff. We're, it's like we know what we're doing. <laughs> no one's convinced <laughs> of that. Sometimes. Uh, all right. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you very much to my players for playing along. And next week, very likely, the incident in Elfwater. We shall see. Shit's about to go down. <laughs> See you guys next week. See ya.